Hey guys, back again. It's a lovely spring day out there, but uh, I'm a little bit behind on orders. So uh, I'm in the workshop. I'd like to go to the woods, but I'm in the workshop. Um, I'm just getting a few orders ready for folks and working on a couple of new projects, a couple of new designs that I'm, I'm, I've got spinning around in my head. A few people have messaged me regarding uh, getting into knife making and stuff. and you know, I'm no expert, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know, I've been doing this a while. Um, I've been putting handles on things a hell of a lot longer than I've been making knives from scratch. And a few people have asked me about handle materials, um, why I use uh, my Carter or G10 as opposed to natural wood. Well, I do use wood. People who follow me on Instagram will know that I do wood. I do traditional uh, traditional knives as well as, as more modern looking knives. But um, the Makata, being man-made from natural materials, if you like, is uh, a lot more stable. From a, from a manufacturing point of view, it's a lot more stable. It behaves itself. And uh, from a longevity point of view, out in the field, if the knife gets soaking wet, or you know it gets left out in the sun the Makata behaves itself so I'm just working on these pair of scales now uh, that are uh, their um, eight millimeter orange canvas Makata on the on the face that'll be the the outside of the knife and then I've got this three millimeter three millimeter uh, black canvas Makata as the liners now I did used to use vulcanized fiber liners and a lot of guys still use vulcanized fiber. Uh, but what I found is, uh, obviously in, in the north of England, in the UK, uh, we've got quite a damp environment. And, and, and you know, you can see I'm only in a shed. Uh, and I, I found that uh, over winter and stuff like that, materials like the vulcanized fiber and, and some of the other materials that we use in would absorb moisture and then when the knife was finished and taken into the house where I do my leather work uh, the the vulcanized fiber would shrink so we're having to bring the knives back and refinish the handles and it's it, it just annoyed me so much that I've switched to um, Makata liners now or G10 I use G10 liners as well but yeah the, the, one of the reasons uh, I do like to use um, the, the man-made uh, scales is, uh, like I said, the more stable uh, for environmental uh, changes. Um, and also, uh, a lot of the guys using the knives that I make are using them for game prep. And uh, these guys will not absorb any sort of, well, let's just, without getting too graphic, um, fluids from the animal. You know, they're not going to, build bacteria up like wood might um, but I do use wood uh, these are a pair of cross cut uh, uh, that's um, black American black American walnut lovely wood to work with and and, and so, so dense and full of oils that that you, you don't need to stabilize that stuff it will see it's really it's really stable stuff is black American walnut it's nice to work with it's not toxic Although, always wear a mask, guys, when you're sanding. Um, always wear a mask, especially with this stuff. You know, get your, get your extraction system set up and, 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 you know, always wear a good mask. Um, that's my grinding mask. Uh, change your filters regularly. Um, you know, there's a good bit of protection there. But get yourself a good mask. Don't skimp. Don't be using these paper masks because, you know... There's some nasty chemicals in this, some nasty dust, and uh, you don't really want to be breathing it in. Um, so even if it's just getting getting the vac up to where you're sanding and try and keep that dust all bagged up because it's you know there's some evil evil chemicals in that stuff. Uh, but again, if you're sanding wood, there's some wood out there that make beautiful scales uh, that, are, in my experience, are just nasty to. Just even if you're breathing, when you're just cutting it on bandsaw, it's just nasty to breathe in. Stuff like coca ball or 
um, it, it's, it, the dust actually stings your eyes. It's that toxic. So you don't, if you imagine that, if that's stinging your eyes, it's not going to be doing your lungs any good. So don't, you know, don't take the risk. Spend your 20, 30 quid on a mask. Or, you know, even if it's something like this one. Even if it's something like that one. Like a paint sprayer's mask. They're good. They're, that, I mean, I used that for a long time, but I wanted a, I wanted a bit, a little bit more protection for when I'm grinding. Uh, so rather than using separate goggles and one of those, um, I went for the full face mask. But yeah, there's, there's just do you do your research on the on the on what you're going to be using. Uh, like I said, the, the, the walnut, so fruit wood and nut wood. Um, like cherry, uh, a walnut, um, sweet chestnut, stuff like that, make, make really good good uh, knife scales and they're pretty stable. Um, if you do want to use uh, wooden scales, look at, um, look at buying stabilised because it, it behaves itself a lot more environmentally um, and it's, it's, uh, it's easier to work with. You're not going to get uh, loads of warping and cracking because the stabilising process kind of turns it into a plastic you'll understand what I mean if you've got some by stabilising I mean uh, the, 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 the wood or the bone or the antler or whatever has been dropped into a, a vacuum tank and had all the air drawn out of it in, submerged in stabilising solution, it has all the air drawn out of the wood via the stabilizing solution and then when you uh, decrease the pressure on the vacuum tank what happens is the wood kind of sucks in all that stabilizing fluid there's a few on the market um, the one that springs to mind that you'll see most of the American guys using is the um, cactus juice um, which personally I've not used but apparently it's absolutely awesome um, and that once you uh, vacuum stabilizer stuff basically you bake you bake your scales and as soon as they're cold they're ready to go um, there's no like waiting waiting time you're not waiting weeks uh, for it to kind of dry out and stuff like that so if you're going to go down that route and buy yourself a vacuum chamber or make yourself a vacuum chamber I mean I've made small ones from uh, uh, from kiln the jars and stuff in the past if you know a little bit about manufacturing engineering they're not that difficult to make don't be going out and spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a vacuum tank just do your research online and, and and make one but yeah so that's just a little quick video on on, on handle materials um i'd like to know your thoughts uh, what you guys uh, have got on the go what projects you've got on the go um, what you're thinking about using because i'm always on the lookout for new materials to use something strange and interesting but yeah Look after yourselves, look after each other. This is Uncle Beard saying I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.